Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Jim. And in this video, I am diving into Luminar Neo. Today is launch day for version 1.0 of Luminar Neo. I'm going to dive into the product in this video. This is my first look at the product now that it's launched and live and available to everybody. Now, if you don't have Neo, there's a link down below. And what I'm going to cover in this video is what's new, what's different compared to Luminar AI, what are some of the features that are coming in the future that are not in this version but will be in the future version, and also some things that are missing from Luminar Neo at launch. I'm going to dive into all of that. First thing though, I have a question for you and that is if you're interested in Luminar Neo, I've got a lengthy list of tutorial videos I will be making, so I humbly ask you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Just hit that subscribe button, hit the bell if you want notifications as well. I'm going to be making a whole lot of videos, as I said, about Luminar Neo. I'm here to help you with getting up to speed and quickly with this product. Having said that, let's get into it. Luminar Neo is live. As I said, we're in version 1.0, and one of the first and key things that people are excited about is layers. Layers are on the left-hand side, and to be clear, I will have a video dedicated to layers. But layers are on the left-hand side. You can just click plus to add a layer, and there are a number of different layer options built in. You can see there's bokeh, sparklers, light leaks, and flares. You can also load an image of your own. In this case, I've loaded textures. Maybe I'll just choose a texture of my own. I can come in, I can resize it and do things like that if I want to. And again, I'll cover all that in future videos, but I can also adjust the opacity as low as I want, that sort of thing, and also change blend modes. I think screen blend mode looks pretty good. And lastly, I can also come in and do some masking. Maybe I want to erase some of the texture from perhaps the tree or the foreground where there's already a fair amount of texture and I want more of it to show up in the sky, I can do that quickly and easily. Now layers gives you the option to add many other things. You can do any of their included layers, you can do your own layers, you could add objects, you could create composites, things like that. Again, I will cover this in depth in a future video, but layers is here, it's very useful, it's a very intuitive, and it's very easy to use, and I love that it just gives you so many creative options with your photos. Now there are also presets included. You can just click on presets and let's say I go into scenery and I choose fast fix and it applies across the entire photo. There are a number of different presets included and again I will cover this in depth in a future video and in fact I'll talk a little bit about presets later in this video but lots of options here. You can of course favorite them and I just favorited fast fix and now it's in a favorites folder so Lots of opportunity here to experiment and apply different kinds of looks to your photo. And as I said, lots of different options included. And they have indicated that they will be converting previously purchased templates over to presets, and they'll be available in your Skylum account in the future. Another cool thing about presets and layers combined is that you can add layers and then independently apply a preset to each individual layer. Again, lots of creative flexibility by using presets and layers together. And as I said, I'll be covering these things in future videos in more depth. Now, another thing that's new, of course, is the engine that Neo is built upon. I'm finding that the speed and the performance of this app is much better than Luminar AI. And in addition, this new engine gives you lots of flexibility that you may not have had with Luminar AI, such as using layers. Another great thing is that you can use tools again and again. And so I could go into Develop Raw and I could do some contrast and some highlights and maybe a little bit of color intensity here with some saturation and vibrance. Maybe I've got something looking like that. But now I can go back in and use develop again. You will see that all these tools are zeroed out. So I could come in and say, well, I want to lift shadows a little bit more and maybe I want to increase exposure, but I really want to mask that in and just do that here in the foreground. Actually, let me adjust the strength. I'm going to put that at 100 and come in and paint that in so that I can control how that looks in my photo. Again, this is just a demonstration, but one of the cool and neat things about Neo, of course, is that you can reuse tools multiple times again, enabled by the fact that this new engine is running underneath it all. Another thing that's new is dust spot removal. So you can see that all these dust spots exist in this photo. In the erase tool, you just click on dust spot removal. It will take them out for you automatically. And there you go. You can see all the dust spots have been removed from that sky. There it is before. Now I brighten a photo prior to doing that edit. But if you look, especially in that upper right corner and some in that left corner, there's quite a few dust spots. And now they're blissfully gone with a click of a button. Another innovation is, of course, power line removal. You might have a photo like this where there are lots of power lines 
Once again, one click is gonna go in and remove all those for you. And there you go. Now, a thing to be aware of is you may have some orphaned power poles like this where you might wanna come in with the eraser and remove that as well, as well as this kind of thicker wire over here. I find that it's generally doing a really good job, but it's something to think about where you wanna go in and maybe clean up some additional things that are left in the photo that don't make sense by themselves, like empty power poles. But regardless, both dust spot removal and power line removal, great AI-based tools that save you a ton of time. Another nice thing is Relight AI, which I covered in depth in that video, but it allows you to basically adjust the light distribution in your photo. You choose brightness near, so you can brighten the foreground a little bit. Depth will allow you to push that brightening further into the photo, and then brightness far, of course, is gonna allow you to adjust the light levels in the background. You've also got some advanced settings here to adjust the temperature and dehalo the image, but it gives you great control based on what they call 3D depth mapping to basically adjust the light distribution in your image and get it looking just right. Again, check out that other video if you wanna see that tool demonstrated in depth. Now, another innovation is Luminar Share, which allows you to quickly transfer images from your mobile device right into Luminar. You go to the export menu icon, which is in the upper right corner, click on connect, it'll give you a QR code, scan it with your camera, and then you can select the photos that you want to move from your device over to Luminar and then edit them easily and quickly. Again, I will cover this in depth in a future video, but that's another new innovation, a new feature that's gonna be really useful for folks like me. Now, some features they've talked about that will be coming in future free updates to Luminar AI include mask AI and portrait background removal. Those are not in the launch version, but they will be coming in a free update. Other things they've talked about include luminosity masking and the ability to host Photoshop style plugins from within Luminar Neo. So you could use Neo as your host, go to a plugin for whatever it might be, and then come back into Luminar Neo. They've talked about being able to add that capability in the future, but we don't have any dates yet. I'm hopeful that it comes. It would certainly be very useful in Neo. Okay, things that are different. Uh, the first one is the develop tool. And again, I covered this in depth in a previous video. I'll put that link there, but there's a whole lot of different tools that have been collapsed and sort of consolidated here into develop. So you have DCP camera profiles, you have light adjustments, you have blacks and whites, curves, color, you've got sharpness here, noise reduction, as well as optics. And so lots of capability built here into the develop tool, which I think uh, honestly is the best place to start when you're editing with Luminar Neo, especially if you have a raw file. Lots of power, lots of capability, lots of control right here in a single tool. I really like how they brought all of that together and basically collapsed some things that were in other tools all into the develop tool here in Neo. Again, check out that other video if you want to see it in depth, but it gives you amazing control and it's a great starting point for editing any image. Another thing that is different is Crop AI. There was something called Composition AI back in Luminar AI, but here in Neo, it's called Crop AI and it is slightly different. You can still choose various aspect ratios and adjust accordingly. You've got automatic straightening and you've got the ability to rotate and flip but it does not have the vertical adjustments. That's not currently in Neo. I'm hopeful that it comes back in future versions. I found it very useful, but just note Crop AI is different than Composition AI, which exists in the previous tool, Luminar AI. And some other changes that are different that you may wanna be aware of are that all the catalog, folders, all the photos, et cetera, all that's on the left-hand side. The UI across the top, has catalog and edit. The export is this tiny little arrow with a box here in the upper right hand corner. And you will note that when you go into edit, your before and after is down here in the center and the bottom, this eyeball. Now I made no adjustments to this photo, but let's say I go in and I increase the shadows and uh, we'll just call it that. The before and after is down here, but there is not a sliding window before and after like there was in Luminar AI, at least at this time. So some slight UI adjustments, but I think especially if you used Luminar AI, you'll find it very intuitive and easy to figure out. Okay, now let's talk about things that I think are missing from Luminar Neo at launch. Again, I'm sure a lot of these are gonna be corrected, but I wanted to point out because I'm getting questions about, hey, where's this or where's that? And I wanna show you what I consider to be missing at this time. The first thing is the histogram. I've had questions, hey, where's the histogram? I can't find it. And the truth is there's not a histogram in the launch 1.0 version, which also means you don't have the ability to see kind of the, what I call the blinkies or whatever, like the J key that I could hit in Luminar AI, which would show me 
overexposed and underexposed, like the blown highlights and the really dark shadows. I don't have that ability because again, I don't have a histogram. So I trust that's coming, but if you're looking for it, it's not in version 1.0. The other thing is, let's say I wanna soften up some of this photo, but I wanna mask it in. Right now for masking options, you only have a paint mask, which is also known as a brush mask. What we're missing is the radial mask as well as the gradient filter mask. So those things are missing. I trust it'll be updated and included, but if you're looking for that right now, it is just the brush mask. You also, in the masking menu, don't have the option right now to copy and paste mask from one filter to another. Again, pretty basic stuff. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be included in an update, but I wanted to point that out because again, I'm getting questions about it. There were two things in Luminar AI that were included in Professional. One was Clone and Stamp, and the other one was Dodge and Burn. Neither one of them are in version 1.0. Regarding Clone and Stamp, there's not really a, another way to do that other than just use Erase, but it's not exactly the same. But with Dodge and Burn, you can somewhat simulate that by doing exposure adjustments with the Develop tool and then painting those in. So that's a little bit of a workaround until there is a Dodge and Burn filter. You may recall in this photo, I applied this Fast Fix preset to it. Here's another thing I want to point out. People are asking me about presets. You don't have the ability right now to go in and save and create your own presets. Again, I trust that's coming, but I wanted to point that out. I'm getting questions. I also want to point out when you do apply a preset, it shows up here in your edit tab, but it's not unlocked. It's what we call a black box. So you can't get in and see which tools are used as part of that preset. It is just a preset and all you can do is increase or decrease the opacity of it. And of course you can remove it if you'd like to. My hope is that they'll unlock presets in the future so that we can go in and see what was used to create the preset because you may want to adjust, customize, and save it as your own. Okay, and one other thing that's missing right now is the ability to sync edits from one photo to another. I took this photo in Dublin years ago. I've got several other photos from the same spot, slightly different timing or maybe slightly moved, whatever, you get the point. You may have multiple variations of photo and perhaps you wanna apply the same adjustments to each of those. Right now you cannot sync adjustments from one photo to another like you can in Luminar AI. Again, I trust that will be updated and included, but I've had people ask, how do you sync adjustments? Right now you can't do it. Okay, my friends, that is my first look video at version 1.0 at launch. Lots of new features that I'll be taking advantage of and having a lot of fun with. New features that will be coming in future updates, including mask AI and portrait background removal. There are some things that are different, although they're not massive enough to cause a lot of confusion, but some changes to the UI, a few tools, things like that. Generally speaking, easy enough to figure out. And as I pointed out, there are a few things that I think are missing that I'm trusting and hopeful that will be updated and included in future updates of the editor. So that's it for Luminar Neo. Hope it gives you a good idea of what it is, what it does. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And here's a playlist I'll link to up above for all my Neo videos. There's lots of power, lots of capability, and frankly, a lot of fun you can have with the app because it does give you a lot of control over your images. I'll be back every week making tutorials about it. Hope that you found this helpful. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. By all means, leave a comment. Let me know what you think down below. And I'll be talking to you soon. And I'll see you real soon with my Getting Started tutorial series all about Luminar Neo. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon, my friends. Until then, take care and adios.